Good morning. What a week, huh? Uh, welcome on this 19th Sunday at the day of Pentecost. It is our joy and privilege to welcome you in the name of the risen Jesus. Uh, if you're part of a community where you're nourished and sustained by Christ's presence, and I suspect all of you are, uh, we rejoice with you. But, but if you're not, if there's someone here who does not have that kind of community, we welcome you to join with us as we seek to grow in Christ and the love that he offers uh, and into our identity as a people blessed to be a blessing to share that love 
with others. And I suspect there's going to be quite a number of opportunities for that in the days and weeks to come. Um, and I haven't talked with, uh, with David Land, but, but if you do have issues and needs, please let us know. Uh, hopefully we'll have a phone back in the uh, office this week before too long. Uh, but do through cell phone let Crystal, uh, David know so we can help any way that we can. Uh, and again, keep all of those without, you know, you know, power and, and water. You, you think, oh my, but they're folks without homes now. And so let's, let's expand that sense of, of interconnectedness and what it means to be the body of Christ. And, and quite frankly, in this time where, uh, where our culture is so divided, we are reminded today of just how connected our lives are. And so, so let's sense and see how God's going to be working for God's glory through this. Uh, Lindsay, can't believe that you were up and about for the early service. This must be important.
please stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we've honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause conflicts and disputes. In our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, Forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in the time of need. And turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. Amen. Please remain standing our opening hymn. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all that we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And I don't believe I see any youngsters this morning, except my little friend, but I'm going to give you a break this morning. So we'll, so we'll continue with our greeting. Good morning. The first reading this morning comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 11. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, 
If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, Carry them in your bosom and as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they came weeping to me and say, Give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone. For they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once if I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting, and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the seventy elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do so again. They should seek songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain, and for three years and six months it did not rain on earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any one of you among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Please rise for the Alleluia verse. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he's not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon after to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. 
If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell where the worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. It was worth coming just to hear that, wasn't it? Yeah, I've got to imagine that uh, the verses you just heard are not on your list of favorite Bible passages. And I doubt those whose lives have been disrupted by this storm this past week turn right there first for comfort. It just wouldn't make sense. Uh, placing millstones around necks and cutting off hands and feet and tearing out eyes are harsh words, words we want to completely ignore and pass off as an exaggeration that Jesus uses to get the attention of his disciples, which, which he does. But while Jesus literally may not have been calling his, his followers to mutilate themselves, we should take very seriously the point that Jesus is making. The reality that our life with God is never just about me and Jesus or between me and Jesus. That we do not live out our faith in a vacuum. Therefore, how we live with and in Jesus matters a great deal, not just to us, but to others. In today's gospel, Jesus is teaching his disciples about the kingdom of God, and as we've heard for weeks, it's not what they've expected or wanted to hear. Jesus has plainly told them the Messiah must be rejected, suffer, die, and on the third day rise, and those who wish to be his disciples must pick up their cross and follow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now Jesus defines greatness in terms of serving rather than being served and giving them that living example of setting their minds on divine things rather than human by placing a child among them and expanding the boundaries of whom to serve to include everyone, particularly those considered the least among them. And as we continue on, the disciples' lack of progress is obvious as one of Jesus' disciples tries to return back to regularly scheduled program and to steer Jesus away from all of this talk about compassion and serving by mentioning that they saw someone casting out demons in Jesus' name, which, by the way, the disciples have just not been able to do. And so they tried to stop him because he's not part of the group. He is not, in John's words, not following us. Now we aren't told whether the disciples are trying to protect the integrity of Jesus' name or their own positions in the pecking order of greatness, <clears throat> but it doesn't matter. Jesus will have nothing to do with it. Instead, he continues to expand the us of God's kingdom wider and wider, stressing the interconnectedness of the body, the us, and contrary to the way this world thinks, whoever is not against us is for us. That may, even, that may be harder to hear than the exaggeration that follows. As Jesus then uses the example of, of cutting off body parts to stress the importance of their walk as disciples and warns them of the power of their words and their actions. 
and how holding on to the way they want things to be and their attempts to limit and control how and through whom God chooses to work has the potential to be a stumbling block, not only in their walk with Jesus, <coughs> but for others, particularly for those who are new or weak in the faith. And that's exactly what we see being played out in our first lesson, where God, through Moses, has brought the people of Israel out of Egypt, parted the Red Sea, led them through the wilderness, providing for their every need, including water and a daily food they call manna. But there's this little group within the people that are drawn together by their mutual dissatisfaction with God's provision. They are tired of eating the same thing every day. They want meat. And they begin to complain. And it spreads like a cancer. The rabble's lack of thankfulness and their craving for what they don't have not only causes them to stumble in sin, it leads others to doubt God's presence, God's abundant generosity and faithfulness. The people forget all God has done for them and is currently doing and promises to do in and through them. They, they forget who they are and what God has called them to be. And the stumbling doesn't stop there. When God becomes angry with the people, Moses becomes angry with God and begins to complain that God has placed him in a no-win situation. The people are a great burden to carry. Moses can't do it anymore, and he sure can't provide meat for all these people. The rabble's craving caused the crowd to stumble, which in turn causes Moses to stumble and forget all God has provided, forget that God has been the one at work. And if meat is to be provided, God and not Moses will provide it. And the damage still isn't over. God responds to Moses' complaint by instructing Moses to select 70 leaders from among the people, bring them outside the camp, where God will take part of the spirit of Moses and place it upon the 70, but that crazy spirit makes its way into camp and two other people. When Joshua, Moses' second in command, hears what's going on, instead of rejoicing that Moses' burden is lifted and God's spirit is alive and at work among the people, Joshua tries to stop it. It's not right. He wants to confine God's power to Moses and the 70. But when Moses sees God's faithfulness at work, he regains his focus. He becomes a building block of faith for Joshua and the community, rejoicing that God's spirit is showing up where it wasn't expected and expressing a desire for God to place God's spirit on all people. And the same is true for Jesus' disciples. Why they, why they don't understand will continue to stumble. Jesus, as we say each week, will not give up on them and will continue to prepare them to be building blocks of faith by following him, uh, being seasoned, salted with Jesus' presence and then serving others in his name. Rejoicing with those who rejoice, mourning with those who mourn, praying for and caring for the sick and the poor, feeding the hungry, welcoming the outcast, offering mercy to the vulnerable, and hope to the hopeless. And things are no different today. As I shared in the beginning, we live in a time where people are deeply divided and define themselves as much by who they're not as who they are, saying and, and fearing that those who do not look exactly like them or think exactly like them are against them. And quite frankly, the same thing happens in the church. Sometimes we forget who and whose we are and the work that God has called us to and our view of who is with us and what's possible in God begins to narrow and and narrow, and, and not only does this cause us to stumble, then 
as we react, what we begin to say and do and don't say and do as members of the body of Christ, how we respond to online posts that hit our hot button or articles or statements that challenge or are contrary to our beliefs begin to lead people to question God's mercy and grace as reflected by our behavior and our words and they stumble in their walk with Jesus. But as we gather each week, we're reminded that in our baptism into Christ, we belong to a different kingdom, a kingdom in which we are one in, in Christ, called to live out our oneness, our interconnectedness by being building blocks of life and faith, serving as Jesus served, continually expanding the us of God's kingdom. Today, in the word proclaimed in Jesus' body and blood and bread and wine, God lovingly draws us back to such a life, forgiving our sins, freeing us from those things and fears that, that cause us to stumble, strengthening our faith. And through the Holy Spirit, equipping us with gifts of compassion to live in and share with all people a grace and a love in Jesus that gives life and hope. It's a life and a hope that we're privileged to share. And again, I think we're going to have quite a few opportunities in the days and weeks to follow to do that. And that, sisters and brothers in Christ, is no exaggeration. Amen. If you would, please stand for the hymn of the day.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation's response is, your mercy is great. Drawn together in the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the people of God in all places. Shape our witness to the good news of Jesus that we joyfully share your transforming love with all whom we encounter. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. We pray for the healing of the earth. Renew oceans, seas, marshes, and estuaries, especially our local rivers and lakes. Uphold the work of conservationists, oceanographers, and all those who care for fragile ecosystems and habitats. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for peace and cooperation among local and global communities. Bless the efforts of community organizers, international aid workers, and all those who work for justice and peace around the world. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all those who are in need, especially those who have suffered devastation recently due to the hurricane. We pray for all those who grieve. Bring them consolation. To all who are weary or lonely, bring them solace. Bring your grace. Make your presence known among all who call for your healing, especially those whom we name now before you with our lips and in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for caregivers, doctors and nurses, home health aides and counselors, and those who care for loved ones. Sustain them in your work and help us to build a health care system that supports all. Hear us, O oh God. We give thanks for the saints who now rest in your eternal presence. In thanksgiving for their lives of faithful service and witness, we commend them to your loving care. Hear us, O oh God. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcome, welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you, keep you, and give you his peace. Amen. Please remain standing for our sending hymn. Now go in peace, follow Jesus. Thanks be to God.